Greetings, Jonathan Camarda, as we move through May into late May, almost Memorial Day. Uh, so a lot to cover. Um, we're going to take some macro views here, kind of give you some perspective uh, as we head into uh, the holiday weekend next week. And then, of course, we'll rejoin you the week after that, uh, give you guys a little reprieve. <laughs> so here's kind of a macro view of where we see things. So last week was a pretty good week for uh, equity resilience, not so much for the long end uh, of the yield curve, but long-term bonds. Uh, and you'll see, uh, again, in active capital preservation, uh, you know, that we uh, trim some of our 20-year treasuries there. So what's happened is we have a resilient U.S. dollar. Didn't seem to bother stocks, but the long end of the yield curve affects those longer-term bonds. Uh, we saw a step back by the precious metals, which we also trimmed. Uh, still hold some gold there in active capital preservation and uh, global macro. Uh, however, again, uh, you know, th these are risk on indicators uh, when you see those back off. Of course, the dollar is not, but equities, like I said, moved up in the face of a dollar rebound, which, of course, last year wasn't the case. So let's go over some long-term perspective, right? We've, heard, we've talked about inflation and CPI, the Fed. We're going to put that aside for this uh, call. We'll call it a call. Uh, today and really just kind of give you perspective on markets. So what we're seeing right now, you know, October were the lows from 2022. Now you have very uh, bearish commentators you may be seeing on TV uh, calling that we're going to go past those and of course uh, talking about a lot of fundamentals. Of course, a lot of these analysts, uh, again, sometimes look past AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, ML, as they call it in the business, and some of what they call the nonlinear correlations that these analysts are just looking at from you know, the past 50, 60, 70 years. The playbook has changed, and markets and computer-driven uh, trading strategies actually look past a lot of these. So you have to be cognizant of that. So let's look actually now, if we look at um, seven months after a market low, if it does not break that low, of the last four time, 14 times that's happened, only two after seven months staying above has it sunk below. That was the uh, tech bubble of 2002 and during COVID, which was kind of an outlier bear market very quick there, right? Only those two times, the other 12, it did not break through those lows. Now, we do definitely have bifurcation in the markets, right? The S&P and NASDAQ, of course, NASDAQ down the hardest last year, are having a real, real good years, while the Dow and the S and uh, the Dow rather and the Russell 2000 and small caps are not. Now, uh, the bear case for that is is that um, you know something has to change, right? Something <laughs> you got to when you get to that fork, you got to take it, right? And so either way, uh, we could have the Dow and the Russell rally to catch up, or we could have a reversion to the mean, which is a nice way of putting a uh, severe downslide in the Nasdaq and S&P 500. Uh, as the Dow Jones and the Russell 2000 are portending of weakness. And when we speak of weakness, this is a very concentrated market. So when you look across most of your strategies and year-to-date returns, you folks are doing pretty well. I mean, you're low mid-single digits in some of these strategies uh, from global macro, a velocity raptor, a uh, sector, a momentum, uh, opportunistic growth in income, basically in those mid-single digits and as such. And some will say, well, yeah, but the S&P is up higher than that. So this is what we call the old man market. What do I mean by that? I'm not going to trade market because it's too fast moving. Old man, as in being M, triple A, N, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, and NVIDIA. Top five companies, okay, market cap wise, 8.7 trillion. Okay, that's 25% of the entire S&P 500 is driving 80% of that S&P return this year, 80%. Now, most of you will find these stocks in your strategies, as they are pretty nimble, but you don't have them composing 80% of your portfolio, as that is not prudent diversification. So on the bear side, you would say this is very concentrated, uh, so therefore watch out. Now, not necessarily, again, do we make calls on that. However, that's why we do have some defensive positions. But again, when you look at the Russell and the Dow Jones, break even, slightly above break even for the year, uh, with a lot of folks are doing better than that, uh, but the, they look at the S&P and NASDAQ. So it's very, very concentrated. If you look at the S&P 500 further, listen to this, okay? You have the mean average return of less than 2% for the entire S&P 500, which means those five stocks are the main drivers of the returns this year. In fact, over half of the S&P 500 stocks are trading below their long-term 200-day moving averages, which is, a, uh, again, a beacon for a downtrend, not an uptrend. Now, with all that being said, we don't necessarily sit in a bear camp totally, because, again, a lot of our indicators are also uh, turning green. 
Now, we do have some overhangs, which we'll get to. So that's why, again, we always remain unbiased on this podcast, show, whatever you want to call it, call. <laughs> uh, and that's why we stay eternally vigilant. So if you notice in a lot of your strategies this last month, taking advantage of that concentration in tech and AI and the such and some of your more nimble strategies and then even in uh, your more dividend-paying strategies, while at the same time having a nice bourse in that 4.8% currently, uh, you know, SNOCs, Overnight Federal Reserve uh, uh, Trust uh, fund as well, including fixed income and short-term treasuries where we're earning uh, you know, low to certainly mid-single digits as well. So again, you got to be prudent with your allocation. And as an allocator, which I am, we're looking at the most attractive asset classes being nimble, especially in tax-deferred accounts, but we're not loading your accounts with 80% in, in, in those, those aforementioned uh, man stocks, okay? I beat Kramer for that, that, that name where he used to have the Fango and all, all the different stuff that he used to uh, go off the original Fang, et cetera. So this is the old man market. So we're going to watch it closely. We have the debt ceiling, right? That's coming up. Now, if you look back to 2011, there are some parallels where the market was up, uh, you know, commensurately like we're seeing this year, but ended break even for the year after a hard fall in that August, right? When they fell off the cliff and then it, it, it raged back late in the year to get to just slightly above break even. A lot of folks calling for that. We're not saying either way. We're just, again, have the hands on the steering wheel and probing between the gas and the brake pedal, as it were, watching this very carefully. The other overhangs that you have, the regional banks. You heard Janet Yellen. Uh, you know, I interpreted a few words of what she said in there, pretty much that consolidation uh, you know, was in the card. So consolidation generally means more banks failing, and she's expecting some of these large banks to come to the rescue. That was a nice way of triaging that, of massaging word salading, uh, the fact that we could see some more failures. So those that were you know, uh, in the Fed and as such saying that you know, these were outlier cases with these banks, maybe not. Even Janet, who I think recently said something like that, basically gave us you know, the playbook that we're going to see more of these. That's what I took from it. We have interest rate risk, of course. Uh, stubbornly, we talked about uh, sticky inflation, which we're not going to go into detail on this cast uh, and as such. So there are overhangs. However, however, anyone who dismisses the move and, again, potentially, again, lower rates uh, you know, and, and propping up these tech names, they can go for a while, which is why, again, unlike the bears on TV, we don't take binary, uh, we don't take bi binary moves. We tread very lightly on the surfboard, in the ocean, let's assess the wave. Again, uh, uh, fear of losing more. Certainly, if we have a hard downturn, not being succumbed to FOMO, fear of missing out. However, when the opportunity's there, we must get on the proverbial board and ride. If you look at your strategy, especially over the month of May, you'll see just that. Monthly statements aren't out till June. You'll see that. Could be drastically different as we move into June uh, if these folks up in D.C. don't get their act together. Stay tuned. It's an ongoing soap opera. With that being said, have a great Memorial Day weekend next week. If you have any questions, certainly we are eternally vigilant and working right through uh, every day, uh, 10 hours a day. But obviously, I'll give you a break from, uh, from these casts so you can enjoy maybe Netflix or something else over the holiday with your family. Again, Jonathan Camarda signing out. Stay frosty. It's a pleasure serving you all. And until next time, have a good one. Stay cool and uh, stay vigilant.